Shonen Knife from 1983, Twist Barbie, the all-girl power pop punk band is releasing its newest album, Adventure, set to be released in April. With me now is the band's singer, leader, and co-founder, Naoko Yamano. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Naoko, and I'm very uh, excited. We're excited to have the new album out. And before we get to Adventure, let's go back about 35 years. You, your sister, Atsuko, and uh, friend Michi Nakatani started the band up. What prompted you to form Shonen Knife? I was bored to daily life, so I wanted to start something interesting. And uh, at that time, I liked uh, late 70s punk new wave bands a lot. So I wanted to be like that. So I formed Shonen Knife. Who were your early influences as a musician? Um, basically, uh, I like the Beatles. And also, I was inspired by uh, Ramones, Buzz Cox, or The Jam. I suppose the Ramones were a big one because uh, sort of an alter ego of Shonen Knife is an all-girl Ramones tribute band. Yes, um, we uh, did a tribute show of, of the Ramones in 1998. And then, uh, 2011, uh, we released a old cover song album uh, called Osaka Ramones. You were influenced by these great bands, but now you have become the influencers. You've been together, you've, you've uh, been playing for 35 years. When you started, did you ever believe you'd still be touring the world and making music decades later? Uh, I, I've never imagined. <laughs> so uh, it's inc- incredible. <laughs> On occasion, some Japanese performers would would gain some international notoriety, but your worldwide success was groundbreaking to the point where Shonen Knife developed a following. I mean, a big cult following. Uh, Talk about your first taste of international alternative stardom. I, uh, at first, I, uh, at at the beginning, I liked uh, American or British rock music, so I'm inspired by uh, Western music, rock music. And then, uh, of course, I wanted to go abroad uh, to play the band uh, as a band, but um, I didn't know how to go uh, abroad. But um, I, uh, after we released uh, some albums, um, many uh, people uh, like uh, Calvin Johnson from uh, K Records or uh, Kurt from uh, Nirvana, or many uh, Jeff from Red Cross, or many other uh, people uh, supported Shonen Knife uh, to go abroad and have a tour. So uh, I think um, thanks to people, uh, many people, uh, we could uh, be uh, popular to foreign countries. Naoko is here with me from Shonen Knife on Revenge of the 80s Radio. How does a band get discovered and become successful in Japan? In Japan, uh, we uh, we played at a tiny club in Osaka or Kyoto. Uh, a guy from a very small, tiny record label guy uh, from a label called Zero Records, uh, he asked us to release an album. And then uh, some people from a big uh, record company guy listened to the our uh, independent album. Um, we could have a chance to release a record from a big label in Japan. Now, all these years, and you kept very true to your root sound, what makes that special sound for you? Uh-huh. Uh, um, I like to listen to uh, 70s American rock and British hard rock. So I'm inspired by uh, 70s sound. So um, especially uh, the, the our album Adventure is inspired by Uh, such uh, music. How would you describe your sound, the Shonen Knife sound? Mm -hmm. Shonen Knife sound, Mm, it's very uh, pop and um, 
the relics is very unique, and um, everyone from a uh, little child to old people can, or from uh, people all over the world can uh, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Naoko. Music. <laughs> <laughs> Naoko, let's talk about Adventure. It's your 19th album. The first single which we will play is called Jump Into the New World. I'm more of a stop the world I want to get off kind of guy, but this track makes me want to jump back on. Yeah, uh, when, uh, when people uh, jump into the new world, people might get nervous, but uh, if listen to listening to music, uh, music make people uh, happy, so uh, people don't need to worry uh, uh, if you people has music. <laughs> so Jump Into the World is uh, such kind of uh, song. Well, we all need music to help us out and, uh, and and get us through life. I'll tell you that. Another very special thing about this album is, is your sister Atsuko returns to the band too. But instead of the drums, she's on the bass. Yes. Um, she she was originally, she was a drummer, but uh, she switched to the bassist uh, and she she left the band uh, because she moved to Los Angeles in uh, 2006 but from this album she came back and uh, she played a very groovy bass <laughs> Speaking of groovy bass you said in a promotional update video for Adventure a little while back that the album is going to be more rock than some of the recent work you did what can fans expect to hear from the, well, more rock album, Adventure? Yeah, Ad Adventure is uh, a world of developed from uh, our last album, Overdrive. So uh, the more powerful uh, 70s hard rock or rock album. You also make me quite hungry with tracks like Wasabi and Cotton Candy Clouds, but which tracks on Adventure stand out to you the most, Naoko? Um, I, um, I like all songs, um, but um, I, I especially like uh, Rock and Roll T-Shirt and Tasmanian Devil. Uh, but I, of course, like Wasabi and Cotton Candy because um, I... I love to uh, write songs about delicious food. Actually, wasabi is not delicious, but uh, I like <laughs> spicy food. <laughs> spicy uh, spices. Hey, you've written about ice cream before, cakes, everything. I mean, I could put a whole menu. I should open a restaurant and, and, and base it on, on uh, shonen knife music. That would be terrific. We could have a really nice menu. It would be, people would come to it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, I can make uh, uh, recipes. <laughs> <laughs> Naoko is with me from Shonen Knife. The new album is Adventure. You're also touring the world to promote Adventure. Yes, um, we will go to uh, UK and I run the tour from April and uh, we'll go to North America in this autumn. We're looking forward to seeing you here in the U.S. And, of course, uh, your fans around the world are looking forward to that as well. You've played all over the globe, Naoko. Where are a couple of your favorite places to play? It's very difficult to choose because if I pick up one city, uh, people at other cities might uh, get sad. Uh, so, good point uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should choose my hometown, Osaka. <laughs> There we go. It's safe choice. <laughs> and and nobody can blame you for liking your hometown. I'll tell you that. Is there anywhere though that you have not played yet with the band where you would like to play, Naoko? Mm, I've never been to uh, South South America and uh, Africa. Uh, so uh, if uh, I have a chance, I'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing for 35 years. The band has been together for that long. This is the 19th album, Adventure. How much classic Shonen Knife is in Adventure, and how much sort of uh, maybe uh, uh, new sound would be in Adventure as compared to uh, some of your early work? Early works are uh, very simple, and uh, recently uh, 
I think in in this 35 years, uh, I developed, so uh, I progressed. So uh, a little more uh, pop and uh, and our album pop tune uh, released in uh, a few years ago was uh, very pop. But uh, after that, uh, I made an album uh, over drive uh, in 2014. It was uh, inspired by 70s uh, hard rock. But for this album, Adventure is more uh, developed and more progressed. So uh, the the sound or uh, songs are more progressed uh, than uh, our early works, but the concept, uh, the basic is uh, always the same. We are very rock. <laughs> Naoko, let's take another step back. I know we talked about your beginnings. You, your sister, and Michi were were straight rock girls. You guys, but you guys were around at a time, and even in America it was like this, where women were expected to sing all the nice uh, uh, you let up my life uh, slow music, things like that. There were very few girl rockers and girl bands who did what you did or did what Nikki Corvette did back in the late 70s, early 80s. What was the music world like for women in Japan back in the, uh, let's say, early to mid 80s when you and uh, Shonen Knife started out? Were there a lot of uh, hard rock girl bands or power pop girl bands out there? Um, in in early 80s, uh, there are not so many bands uh, like nowadays but there are some bands and also uh there are female bands in uh our hometown area so uh we are not so special but uh my parents are very conservative and uh they didn't like me to uh, play in a rock band my parents didn't want me playing in a rock band either when I was younger, but that's because I had no talent. So that was a different story altogether. So you had a tough time from your parents, though. <laughs> what what were they? What did they want you to do, your parents? Uh, uh, I I don't know. I have talent or not, but um, I I just wanted to do uh, things which I like. So. Um, but what did your parents want you to do uh, if they didn't want you to do the... Uh... Uh, parents, <laughs> uh, parents wanted uh, me to do um, uh, uh, well, me, my parents uh, want me to be a uh, kind of uh, office worker and then I uh, get married with uh, regular person. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds boring. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that could never happen. <laughs> no, well, I, I think I'm speaking on behalf of many of your fans. We're all very happy you chose the rock band route. We're all looking forward to the release of Adventure. So, uh, Na- Naoko, thank you once again for coming on Revenge of the 80s Radio with us. Thank you so much. Adventure looks to be a huge smash, and I wish you and the band continued success. Where can fans find information about your tour for the year? Um, um, we will tour, uh, tour to North America in this autumn, so please check out our official website, shonenknife.net. Thank you very much, Naoko. Here's a track from Adventure, new from Shonen Knife, Jump Into the Real World on Revenge of the 80s Radio.